And I think we're right at 11 o'clock, so let's get to it. Okay. Um, so I, before we um, start presenting our slides, I just quickly want our panel to introduce themselves and say a little bit about who they are. So I'll start. I'm Caroline from the SciStarter team. Um, I'm really passionate about citizen science and um, the best part of my job are presentations like this because I get to learn new things and today I'm going to learn all about air quality and citizen science. Okay, perfect. I am Angela Justamante. I am a biologist specialized in scientific communication and I am part of Cosmo Cloud communication team, which is one of the organizers. So I am really happy with this web webinar because I'm going to learn as well a bit about citizen science and air quality monitor that I am not so expert. So that's all. Who Great. wants to introduce? Daniel, do you want to introduce yourself next? Hi, my name is Daniel. I'm from Bogota, Colombia. I'm electronic engineer and citizen science of air quality. Great. Okay, for my side. Um, okay, I am Antonio Vanegas. Uh, I am from Colombia, but uh, right now the, I am living in Berlin. Um, um, my major topic is uh, working with uh, some devices with a uh, with a joint with a mobile devices. Um, I, I still working with, the, with a new version of the Canario devices for high quality measures. Uh, it's, it's my, yeah, okay. Fantastic. Hello everybody, my name is Juan Carlos Pachon. I'm, I am a 51 years artisan and a citizen science I work with Canario and is, uh, uh, my work is uh, test and test and test the, the, the devices. Only I, only I am a hobbyist. That's awesome. And then Sonia. I don't know if she can hear us. Yes, yeah, Sonia. Now, can you hear me now? We can yeah. hear you. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm Sonia from Barcelona. I am a biologist uh, specialized in scientific communication. I'm passionate about citizen science and I'm working with Angela in Cosworth Cloud. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to with this webinar because uh, I think I love Canario, so I think it would be great. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get to it. So we're going to kick things off with a live poll. We just want to learn a little bit more about you. Um, so please tell us, you know, who you are. And you don't have to be just one thing. So are you a citizen scientist? Are you a parent of an aspiring citizen scientist, an educator, um, part of a library staff, a researcher? Just let us know. Um, please vote. And for our friends tuning in on YouTube, unfortunately, you cannot participate in the polls, um, but uh, feel free to leave notes for us in the YouTube comments and we'll look for those after the recording. Um, so it looks like a, quite a few folks have voted. We got a lot of citizen scientists here, a few educators, some parents, some researchers, so a pretty even spread of everybody. So I'll give you all one more chance to vote. So three, two, one last chance and we're going to end the poll. So you all should be able to see the results on your screen. So we got about 60% citizen scientists. That's good. You're in the right place. Um, for those of you who aren't citizen scientists yet, you're going to become one today. So you're also in the right place. Uh, then we have one more poll question. We want to know, um, have you participated in a citizen science project before? And it's totally okay if you haven't. We just kind of want to get where you're at um, with this whole field. So for those of you who said you were citizen scientists already, I'm assuming the answer might be yes, but it's totally okay to say no. And it's okay not to be sure too, because um, after today, um, I think you'll have some clarity about the best way to get started. Oh my gosh, the results are coming in. Looks like almost over 70% of people have done projects before, which is awesome. And for those 26%, don't worry, you're in the right place. So last chance to vote, three, two, one, and we will end the poll. And you all should be able to see the results on your screen. 
All right. So for those of you who aren't as familiar with citizen science, one way we like to define it at SciStarter, and this definition comes from the Field Guide to Citizen Science, a book SciStarter's founder, Darlene Cavalier, um, published this year. Um, citizen science is a collaboration. So it's a relationship. It's not just contributing one way. You're able to turn your own curiosity to impact and investigate the things that matter to you with citizen science. So you're working with scientists and the research community to make a difference. So um, you may be a person who's curious, concerned, maybe you wanna learn more about galaxies, maybe you're worried about the air quality in your neighborhood, you can address that with citizen science. And citizen science is as diverse as um, science itself. So I mentioned galaxies, right? It's everything from astronomy to air quality to zoology and in between. So um, with citizen science, you can get started at SciStarter. Um, SciStarter is the connector between um, citizen scientists and the projects and events that need their help. Um, and we also run a number of programs. You're actually participating in one right now. We um, do our webinar series and we work with um, amazing partners like our panelists on the line um, to provide these educational and get started materials. But we also run programs like Citizen Science Month, our The Girl Scouts Journey, um, education programs. We have a blog series and multimedia efforts. Um, we recently um, partnered with um, Earth School to provide a citizen science quest to students worldwide and look up Earth School um, through TED Education in the United Nations Environmental Program if you want to learn more. And then the core of SciStarter is our project finder. Um, so you can go to scistarter.org forward slash finder, make a SciStarter account, and get started searching for projects and keeping track of those projects in your dashboard. Um, so you could search for projects that you want to do outside. Um, you could search for projects that would be appropriate for you to do with a child. Um, to introduce them to citizen science. Um, you can search for projects that are SciStarter affiliates, meaning that you're able to track the number and frequency of your contributions to those projects in your SciStarter dashboard and get credit for those projects in your dashboard. And we want a community that they really enjoy doing that, um, being able to do that level of tracking and um, assessment of everything they've done um, and contributed to the field of science. Um, so we just urge you to get on SciStarter and start exploring. And um, we urge you to get involved with um, citizen science and using different citizen science tools. Um, so you'll learn about how to do that today. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and hand it over to our other panelists. Okay, so thank you very much, Caroline. It's a, it has been a pleasure to, orga to have organized this webinar with you. So I'm going to start sharing my screen to explain a bit more about Cosmo Cloud. Do you see it? Yep, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So Cosmore Cloud is an European project to boost citizen science technologies. Our aim is to, um, wait, sorry, to create and technological services that improve citizen science observatories uh, in terms of being able to exchange data, to share data, recognize the contribution of citizens. And once created, the services will be available in the European Open Science Landscape, EOC. So uh, one of our aims is as well facilitate the networking among observatories and so on. And uh, the most important thing is that we have nine citizen science platform uh, focus on biodiversity and environmental monitoring that will test the services that we will develop. Uh, among them, we have Canario, who is the, the who are the panelists today, the speakers today. Okay, so throughout all the project, we will organize activities, we will organize more talks, we will disseminate all our results. So we invite you uh, uh, to follow us in, on social media. We have LinkedIn, we have Twitter, we have YouTube. So please follow us and share with us your opinion about the webinar on social media by adding the hashtag, hashtag citizen observatories, hashtag air quality monitoring, and hashtag canario. So we can follow all of your comments and we can answer you. So thank you very much. I am finished. Um, and Caroline will right. present uh, our speakers. Sounds good. I'll start sharing my screen again. 
Okay. And um, thank you again, everyone, for caring about this topic and wanting to learn how to get involved with air quality monitoring. Um, so I'm going to present um, our agenda. So of course, part one, citizen science and air quality monitoring. That's why you're here. Um, and this webinar is a little longer than usual. So we just wanted to flag that for you. It's 90 minutes. Um, so please don't be afraid to utilize the recording afterward. We're streaming live on YouTube right now. So you can go to the SciStarter YouTube channel to find it. Um, and so don't feel like you have to get everything in this particular meeting. You can come back and watch again later. Um, you're also going to learn about Conario itself, the story behind it, and why participatory science to monitor air quality matters. And so that's kind of the informational part. And then part two is let's um, roll up our sleeves and get working. It's about how to build the device at home. Um, so how the sensor works as a fixed status station. So you'll learn a little bit of um, the back end of that. And then also um, how it works as a mobile station. So how to build it and how to use the mobile app. And of course, we have a feeling that you'll have questions because um, who doesn't learn without asking questions? So don't be afraid to utilize that chat box um, as we go and put your questions in there. We promise we'll get to all of them at the end um, and we'll make sure to reserve time for that. So um, I'm gonna introduce our speakers, our main speakers. You heard from the panel to get started, but um, so Daniel Bernal is gonna be your guide to all of this. So um, he's an activist and expert, focuses on citizen science, air quality, and wetlands. Um, and he's um, a member of different groups, including um, Conario um, and uh, other groups in Colombia um, and international organizations as well. And he's very focused on community growth, hardware, firmware development, networking, and activism. Um, and if you want to find him on Twitter, um, you can see his handle down at the bottom of this slide and also the handle for his organization, so which is Con Air Q. And then our other speaker is um, Antonio um, Venegas. Um, he's a systems engineer. Um, and a um, applications developer and he's also very interested in air quality monitoring and citizen science and he's an active member of free software communities and he is also on the conario team he's a co-founder um, a developer and he's currently working on the conario platform itself um, the mobile application the data cloud and the firmware of the device and um, he'll explain that to you during this presentation so with that I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here and let you all take it away. Okay, um, Daniel. Um, okay. Ah, Frise, uh, we, we can share it to you uh, the. You can see Daniel, my screen. The, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yep, so we can see your screen. screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we start with a uh, we have a small presentation about uh, low low cost sensors, and we start with this document uh, from the European Commission. Mm -hmm. In what we in what they explain what is a low cost sensor. In two minutes uh, is not enough time, but if you read this this document, is very is a very good document for understanding what is a low sensor. For example, in our case, we use particulate matter um, sensor. If you see this picture, uh, that is a big box. Uh, uh, it's a traditional low. Uh, it's a traditional sensor that maybe cost I don't know maybe thirty thousand dollars or maybe $100,000. Now the technology of lasers and low cost sensors, we have, for example, uh, in this other page, an, a list of particular matter sensors that are low cost. We use at the beginning this sensor that is a Honeywell that costs $20 uh, and in Mauser and VGK, uh, they cost in, in this time $40, $40, but there are many options. One tower, we use a sensor that is Panasonic. And, and the change from you have to the traditional sensors from uh, example, $10,000 to the change to have sensors for $30, uh, 
uh, is the approach that the citizen science made uh, for air quality systems. Uh, there are many other sensors for gas and other pollutants, but uh, in, in our case only use particular matter. And the invitation is that you visit this, for example, this page, AQIICN. That is a Chinese organization that uh, explained very well what is a, a local sensor and the brochure that I'll show at the start from European Commission for the understanding of what is important in local sensor in the air quality monitoring. Uh, I stop share my screen. Go ahead, Antonio. And you and you drop your microphone. <laughs> Antonio? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, I am Android developer, but um, uh, some some years ago, the, I living in Bogota. The, we we can't uh, many issues and many problems with uh, public massive transportation. For the reasons um, uh, we, we started uh, the Canario in in tip. Um, this is a citizen network for monitoring high quality network for 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 citizen science users. Um, the the project um, um, uh, started with uh, some say, free uh, communities uh, around the the free software foundation, the free software the, um, free software initiative uh, like. Uh, uh, some say free open source and uh, free projects. And the, the, the idea for the initiative is uh, working with um, a, 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 this kind of, of uh, devices uh, with uh, a very, very uh, cheap uh, devices. Because uh, the, the idea is uh, the, 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 the most important uh, uh, goal is uh, the replication of the community, the using uh, with uh, the, these devices with uh, some smartphone for reduce the cost of the fabrication of the, these, uh, these uh, devices. For, for the reasons uh, we only have uh, this kind uh, the, uh, the, uh, this kinds of sensor. Um, and and um, right now uh, we have uh, many users that uh, we, that was joined with uh, with that with with with, uh, uh, with uh, our uh, cloud and uh, with uh, our applications. Um, the idea for today is show the the the, the progress of this uh, this. Uh, these uh, types of, of, of sensor that uh, we, we mentioned here. Uh, and I know more, the, the idea is uh, uh, show the, the, the two devices uh, for fixed station and mobile stations with uh, smartphones uh, is, is the idea for, for today, for, for show for, for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Antonio, I'm going to share the screen. Please stop the share. Yeah. Um, screen share. Um, you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Thanks, Antonio. I'm going to explain some successful experience that we have with the use of Canario Sense. I start with the sensor using used in mobile mode. The internal battery allows it to be taken anywhere and connected to a cell phone by Bluetooth. We can record the value of particulate matter and the GPS coordinates of the place. On the left side of the graph of the screen, you can see the Canario measurement. Mm -hmm. The first experience of this work 
start in, in Transmilenio, a massive transportation of Bogota, widely recognizing in the world for moving large numbers of people on buses. In this time, we have this problem because uh, Transmilenio is characterized for large number of people and, and which never take taken care of the big problem of air quality within the system. As you can see in the photo, the buses emit big clouds of smoke due to a lousy maintenance and for using buses with use, useful life of 10 years, extending to 20. The first measure was made in August, uh, August 2017, and they showed extremely high values that generate, generate serious suspicion. Then using citizen science, we made with the Canario and um, for example in this in this in this case I I measure in the bus at the station and a Pedrescan bridge and you can see the the big difference in the in the measurement. Something was very wrong with this system of buses. Here we Antonio with the two with the two sensors. We use the Canario and a user and a, and a sensor used for scientific studies. Those track 85, 33, and they gave us a higher values that is confirmed the problem of the system. For two years, for two years, a very strong work was done on social networks, especially Twitter, that caused awareness in the science, in the citizens of this terrible problem, and finally the academy in the year 2019 after confirming what we have shown with our system sense measurement. They published a widely recognized paper which concludes that a 70 minute transmillennial trip is equivalent to inhale one that two times the maximum daily dose recommended by the World Health Organization. First we show it, then the academy. This is, can be considered a successful exercise. The next, in, in this example, we convert a small version similar to the one that we are going to assemble next into a pollution watch to measure our bicycle routes and then mapping it. The travel shows an acceptable yellow color at the beginning, but then uh, shows a harmful red according to the AQI scale. This information is valuable for our citizens and it allows to make decisions to make, to take bicycle routes if the if the air quality is poor in a trace above an avenue etc other examples of 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 successful cases uh, we uh, we are using for canario and uh, fixed or static mode a sensor that is placed placed in a certain place measuring like a traditional station 24 hours a day 7 days a week this sensor, that is the example, is located in a neighborhood close to the Doyan Juana Sanitary Landfill in Bogota. The residents have serious respira respiratory problems as, an, as a neighborhood of a, of a landfill. But odors and gases should be the culprit. 7,000 tons of garbage was disposed every day in this, in this landfill. The, the Red Mountain, mountain that you see in the picture is the landfill. But when we place in a canario, they realize it that the very high measured, measured values of PM25 that is not logically that they occur in the landfill. This map at the right is Bogota and you see many sensors. Uh, the majority is in yellow and green, shows good and acceptable air. But at this station in Mochuelo, that is low, shows brown, that is dangerous to health, the highest level of danger. The graph up on the left side uh, shows the, the measurements on our website and shows the values of 900, 800, and average of 500 for two hours a day only. The rest of the data they measure are, are is well. Investigation shows that neighborhood bridges that illegally catch fire at night and seriously affect their, their air quality. 
at least for now, they know who to blame for the high concentration of particulate matter and their illnesses from this count. Uh, uh, this is the map, the brickyard, the sensor, and the landfill. And finally, we show the 16 fixed online sensors through our city, Bogota. Traditional station type uh, can be done in any city in the world with the tools of Canary. When the, official, when the official network of Bogota at the left have problems and don't transmit any data, we are there. Information that is very important for citizens if your city, for example, does not have official, official monitoring, you can do it. If it already has, you can compare, learn about it, and have for your, for your neighborhood. With this, we move to the second part of the workshop, sensor assembly. I, I use my, my screen now. And we use the guide that is published on Hackster.io that uh, shows how to build a low cost air quality sensor with Canario. We are in the version 2.1. To achieve the assembly of the sensor, um, the first part we see is the hardware components, things that you sent in the project. Uh, for example, if you, if you wa want to buy the Panasonic sensor to push the, this button, and you see the, the, the distribution that is made for Mauser and DGK in the United States, also for Latin America and Europe. For example, other part, uh, ESP32 main board. This goes to AliExpress. AliExpress is a um, is, um, widely recognized distributor. They come from China. And the rest parts of the, of the hardware are, can be buying in AliExpress. We use um, the variety is important. Part of the sensor that can be found in AliExpress, but also we recommend that searching in your local country because the shipping could take two or three months. Next, you have to use the Canario app that is in Google. This is the Canario app. And, uh, and for the burning of the firmware in the, in the microcontroller, we use Platformio or Expressive. And I show uh, next what it is. Story. Um, when other materials are soldering iron and thin solder. With this guide, you'll be able to build a device to measure air quality by using a Panasonic sensor, uh, which measures particular material, and sharing your instrument via your phone with the Canario app or your Wi Fi. This is the, the materials uh, that we explain. And, um, the, uh, one important thing is that you can use this battery which have 10 millimeters, 34 and 50, or use a smaller battery. Uh, well, we start with the video. I play the video and I'm sure what is the... Yeah, I'm going to explain step by step. You open the box. Is an is an OLED board. Um, oh, and you put the you are the the screen. You turn it over to able to weld it on top. First, you test the temperature of the welding iron with the thin solder. We start, then place the soldering iron parts, and then the thin solder. All with parts heating with the soldering iron, and then put the thin solder. Yeah. It's a step by step. Yeah. 
and then put the TST32 board and take care of the position of the board. If you put it wrong, it's very difficult to desolder in the board. Yes, you solder and it's very easy. Now then the other side. Yeah, we finish this part. Next, got the leftovers. Be careful with the leftovers that can be expelling when cutting. You have to protect, to protect. Now you are, you are going to build an adapter for the battery, excuse me, for the sensor. And we connect the cable, um, the cable, the cables in the booster and you solder. The black in the ground and the red in the five volts. Now we put additional wires to the board, orange and, and white, and go to the booster in the in, in plus and in minus. Then we we connect and solder the blue wire to the board. Connect the cable that comes with the Panasonic sensor. And now you're going to build an adapter for the battery because the battery comes with only the cable wire. And we need it to connect to the ESP32 port. It's easy. And you add the head strain tubing. With and with and heat with the soldering iron. Now connect the battery to the board. Yeah, we finished and make a great job. Some ex uh, special details uh, are explained in the in the guide. And optional, you can you can put a uh, temperature and humidity sensors to validate the values of the particulate matter sensor. It's optional and you only have to wire these two additional cables to the sensor that you use, that is AM2320. And uh, it's important because when you place a fixed station mode, uh, that reports 24 hours a day to a website. Uh, and it's important to make this um, validation. And uh, now the sensor is already prepared to burn or, or program the firmware. There are two options, Platformio, that is explained for every operating system or the expressive software for Windows. This is a complete guide for for Platformio, step by step, is uh, is is a it's a little bit complicated, but to people who is um, familiarized with Linux, it's easy. When you finish, um, the result is an emoticon in the screen and the value of the PN in the screen. The other option is for Windows, only for Windows. Um, and it's born, uh, burning system with uh, software de development by the uh, uh, Expressive Enterprise. Uh, there is a complete video that, is, that uh, explains step by step how to uh, Windows programming. Um, I put a little bit, uh, but it's very easy, uh, like uh, the video explains. Is the same is the same structure for the past video, and if you if you follow these instructions, you made it. Or for example, 
uh, are very uh, are other step by step guide next. Now I'm going to show how the sensor is assembled inside the box. This is the, the wood part. Um, it, this is done with the file attached, a box Panasonic sensor one unit. And I designed it designed to make it a lot small, but there is other model, models that are positioned soon. A laser coding machine could all, cut all the parts in wood for you. We have to be careful uh, with the parts. You saw it, what the assembly, part by part. Yeah, the we made the box. Now uh, we put the electronics and organize the electronic parts. Third sensor, battery, and board. It's very easy. I'll show you, yeah. Next, we put an adapter for the screen to go inside the box. Now we put a large wood rectangle in between the screen and the battery. Now place the electronics inside the box. We have to be careful with the screen because it is fragile, not, not to press it too much. And finally, we put the wood rectangle behind the sensor so this do, don't move and put the cover. Adjust everything and ready. Turn off the switch that is on the front upper and we have our sensor, our sensor functional work. Here I test with an instance to see if the value rise. And in that they rise, we have things. Great job. Now, uh, there are two other videos and more information that explain how to use the Canario app, how to connect the sensor uh, to the app. These videos are in Spanish, but have English subtitles and shows how to use the, to use the Canario app step by step and how to connect via Wi-Fi as a static or fixed sensor. Uh, the, the videos are the same, very easy. Here I use an um, old model of sensor, but it's the same with the new one. We, we turn on and, up and open the application step by step, and you saw the, the value of particulate matter in your screen, and then we can record the, the value that is stored in your phone, or maybe you can share uh, with the community with this with this button. The next video is uh, for aesthetic station mode. It's the same. Uh, here we explain step by step what information do you have to put in the application. And the video is, is large because uh, it's a more complex process but it's the same uh, and if you have, uh, if you make the, the, la the last video, it's the same. Then if you have to, to device like a fixed station, the battery only 
only works about six hours or four hours, and then you have to connect it to external power source all the time. Uh, last, last recommendation is charging the battery to full when the sensor is new. And well, this is have to finish the sensor assembly. These are, these are the schematic uh, for the box, for example. I'm going to show. Um, for example, this is the, the file for the laser cut book. And uh, well, this this is I have finished the central assembly. Now Antonio goes to show our latest version of Canary. Stop share and go ahead, Antonio. Okay. Um, moment. And everyone, please don't forget to utilize that chat box. We've been recording all the questions we've been getting as we go. So don't be afraid to put your questions in. We'll get to all of them at the end. Okay. Um, okay. The, um, for this, um, uh, let me show the, to, to us, uh, the, the, the exploration of the, the different uh, devices because um, the Canario is a, a, is a continued evaluation of researching uh, some say, solution from uh, many sellers like, uh, like uh, Aliexpress and other sellers uh, like uh, CD Studio and other uh, sellers because the idea is um, uh, the, the main goal is the replication, the easy replication from the community of the, the sensors. Uh, it's, um, Right now, the, in my my screen, the, I show the the a, a little is a evolution of the this of these sensors. Um, uh, the 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 first uh, the, the first sensors uh, that uh, we we had with uh, using uh, some say, um, a, a sensor for for watch. Uh, like that, like this, but uh, right now um, we we have uh, different uh, kinds of, of, of sensors. The the um, with uh, some uh, workshops uh, with uh, many people, the, we we have uh, some feedback from uh, many uh, many kind of people that uh, journalists and some say uh, electronics uh, developers and some say uh, software developer and also activists from Colombia. From other countries, for for um, in, in conclusion, um, the the idea is uh, is working in 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 the in the goal of the 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 get a easy sensor for for the people. Um, the the major major uh, goal for for us is maybe produce a a tiny sensor for 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 us. Like a, like a, this. Uh, this is a Bosch sensor uh, because because uh, the idea maybe is uh, working on a, a, a smart watch or a smart pulse for 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 the people for measure the, the air quality in the in the cities uh, when they may be walking or maybe uh, uh, go in in the transportation or another situation. Also, the the fixed station like a solar stations. Uh, uh, another uh, kind of, of fixed station for for outdoors in in, in the house or, or for with a panel solars for for the for improve the the, the power consumption uh, for 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 these reasons um, we we looking up for uh, a, a small device for for the, uh, these uh, kinds of situations for for the people. The the last version is 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 the next. Um, let me show. Uh, is um, is is an optional version with a case in in three D print. Uh, the idea maybe is uh, working on that, but the. Uh, uh, we know that maybe that's expensive for uh, some people. 
but the, the, the idea maybe is an alternative for uh, the current uh, de device. Um, this is a uh, aspiration because uh, right now the this sensor is uh, uh, is in, uh, the the status is in in, in progress. Uh, the status is in continued testing because uh, we have uh, some issues uh, for for release a uh, complete git for for uh, all community. The idea is uh, is working on that, but uh, we we are already near to the uh, new new version of the this uh, this version. Um, in this version, uh, we we have a uh, uh, a better main board because uh, the consumption is is very low, and uh, maybe for for this reason, to the people uh, uh, using that uh, for for uh, like a a purse, uh, like a a gadget for your bag or your bike or your um, for for clothes, maybe for wear the sensor in in, in the body, maybe. Um, and, and let me let me show the the the, the final results of, of this uh, this kind of sensor. Um, the the screen is uh, is in colors. Uh, the idea is uh, is show the the pollution with a different uh, kinds of representation like uh, emoticons and also. Uh, colors for show the show um, the pollution levels for communicate uh, in in good uh, improve the communication to the user uh, with the colors or emoticons is is the idea. Um, all uh, devices in Canario are, are uh, open source. Uh, Open source and all uh, um, software that uh, that uh, we have is uh, open source, um, uh, and the the last version is uh, published in GitHub. Uh, you can uh, download uh, the, the the last version of this uh, sensor in in GitHub, and the. Um, the flow of the compi the compiling and installing the firmware is 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 a little bit similar to the the sensor that uh, um, Daniel mentioned. Um, also, uh, we have uh, uh, the old uh, 3D models uh, published in Dingleverse. Uh, if, if you can't. Uh, uh, you uh, the the case for from a 3D printer. Uh, you can download the uh, all smalls uh, here, and and the, the idea is maybe in two or three weeks uh, uh, release a, a new guide of of this uh, this kind of sensor. Um, for for our side, um, in in this version, uh, we we can add two kinds of of, of devices: um, the Panasonic sensor, uh, also like uh, uh, the version two one, and also uh, the 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 Bosch sensors. But the Bosch sensor is is optional. Uh, um, the sensors uh, measures uh, the resistance of the air, and some say. Quality sensor indicator for indoors. Uh, maybe, maybe you can use that, but uh, it's optional. And the, the another the main component is uh, the, the same sensor, Panasonic sensor for particle meter. Um, we we have uh, some improvements of the consumption because uh, uh, with uh, this kind, uh, the, the, with the, this prototype, uh, we can't enable disable the, the main sensor for improve the consumption. Uh, the idea is is that uh, maybe um, the, the the sensor uh, have a uh, 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 some say, uh, kinds of power management. Uh, the idea is maybe suspend old sensor or hibernate old sensor and each uh, kind of 
period of time to, uh, it's a uh, wake up and maybe get a uh, new uh, measures for publishing in, in, in the, our cloud. And uh, the, 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 the current uh, variables uh, uh, right now is uh, published in InfluxDB, InfluxDB database uh, with a visualization with a Grafana. Um, yeah, all sources open. Uh, you can uh, uh, deploy the, uh, a version in in our PC or in our uh, uh, server, or maybe in in another instance of in Amazon or Google. And you can uh, upload uh, all data from your sensor to to this kind of or, or, or database. Because uh, Canario is open in 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 the in these settings, uh, you can't uh, use in the um, any instance for for publish your data, or using the, the Canario uh, cloud is the is the idea, no? Um, the last sensor, the the last version of the sensor, uh, has a, a different uh, uh, units like a pressure and humidity also, but the, the, the different, uh, different unit is the gas resistance for uh, IUK for indoors. And also uh, the particular matter uh, uh, has uh, two units more, the, the PM1 and PM10. Um, and no more from my side, maybe we can't uh, go to the questions. I don't know. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, so we have some questions to get us started. And as you all hear these questions, feel free to chime in with additional ones in the chat box. Um, so I think we'll start with this one. It's question for Antonio and Daniel. How much has your approach in this project been actively informed by frugal innovation thinking? What, maybe, can you repeat, please? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's a question for Antonio and Daniel. They want to know, how much has your approach in this project been actively informed by frugal innovation thinking? So if there's a, I, I'm not quite sure what frugal innovation is. Um, do you all know? And frugal innovation thinking, um, I don't know what it is, but I think maybe is the citizen science, the, the new approach to the experience of people. And if, and if this is the, the answer, I think that, that yeah, we, we have to, to, to have experience in, in, the, in the air quality monitoring but not for the academy, not for the papers. Uh, it's because of our experience, and I think that, that this is the big, the big goal of the citizen science: how to a uh, normal citizen without knowledge, how to approach to um, a big technical problem like, or a big a big technical issue like the air quality. That's a great answer. Um, do, do any of the other panelists want to chime in on that? So um, do you have any perspectives on the idea of frugal innovation and in the work you all do? This is an, uh, a new expression, frugal innovation. See, yeah, it's, it's very, very worried for me. Um, my, my English is very bad, but Frugal innovation, okay. Like the idea of making something really cool, but not costing very much, which I, I think you all, I think it, it applies here. I mean, you're, you're making something that's valuable for people that won't break the bank. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, another question we had is, um, do you have a recommended age level? So what age, do you think, kids could make these or do you think they'd need parents with them what ages do you think could be part of this activity yeah in the in the evolution of, of the sensors uh, uh, we, we try to reduce the, the the wires and and the the 
the, the some uh, difficult uh, flows in, in the fabrication of the sensor, but um, I don't know, maybe for a child with a parent, maybe it's, 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 uh, it's better because uh, sometimes it's, it's not easy, no? Yeah. Uh, because uh, maybe you need the practice of the, the joints uh, with, a, with a, the metals is, is, is a little bit uh, difficult for maybe for a child. And, and that, the idea is working in, in uh, a better joints, uh, maybe only joints or only a kit for, for uh, join the, the, the parts without any uh, with any uh, wires uh, that maybe this is the idea. No, I don't know. Maybe Daniel, what 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 do you think about it? I think that because the use of the soldering iron and the thin solder, mm, you have to take care because it's very hot, it's very heat and but. Uh, but for the use of the sensor, anyone could use it, a boy, uh, an adult. Uh, but for the making process of the sensor, uh, I think that maybe we have to take care of it too. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, uh, now we have a project in a public school uh, in ninth grade. Uh, the childs are maybe 12, 10 years and use the canario from to uh, measure air quality and communicate to the other students inside the school the air quality. Uh, it's too difficult to build the canario, but it's too easy to, to use it for take decision of uh, what air quality I break. And uh, we have childs using canarios right now. Okay. Great. Um, so I think that answers that question. And if anyone else has more, um, more questions about that, please don't be afraid to ask. Um, another question we got was, we talk about data, but is there any specific reason except for comparison for air pollution measurements on mountains, are these measurements more useful in cities? So basically they're asking, could we make, where should we make these measurements? Should they be in the mountains? Should they be on cities? What's the best place? Uh, I think that is a great question because the particulate matter uh, is very used in cities, not in landfills, uh, not in mountains like the person that answer, but uh, I, I take an example of Colombia. Uh, we think that only the cities, the cities are polluted, but we have a season with wildfires, very big wildfires in Venezuela and, and one part of Colombia that is called uh, Los Llanos. And this, these uh, places, uh, Supposedly have good uh, good air good air quality all time, but in this season uh, the, qual the, qual the air quality is very bad. And, and this is an example of we uh, is good to 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 measure insights that we think that is very very cleaner, but uh, maybe we have some information. Uh, in in one month of the year or at a certain time uh, that is not good. Uh, and the the air quality monitoring is is going to the cities to the to other sites because because this situation. I think that the the best place to to use the canario is, is in the cities because uh, air quality and the pollution is the first health problem right now in the world. Uh, the pollution is the, the, the first reason to death uh, in the world. And right now with the pandemic and the COVID-19 uh, have uh, uh, some 
information about the link between contamination, the air pollution, and the, the, the easy spread of the virus. And, and it's important to know how quality are we are brave. Yeah. Great. Um, another question we received is how accurate are these low cost sensors? Has there been comparison testing with more advanced sensors that groups like the EPA in the United States might use? So basically, how accurate are the sensors? This is the principal question. Every time we talk about do yourselves uh, air quality sensor is the accuracy. Uh, we have uh, now a sensor that has an accuracy of 15%. Uh, uh, that is important because is uh, we have a measure of the tendons. Uh, if you translate the concentration of the PM uh, 2.5 to uh, in the air quality index, the index is green, orange, or yellow. Uh, you, you have an idea what type or what kind, what type of air you breathe. Uh, it's not a precision instrument, but is is a, a, a useful instrument to know how 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 uh, is air, the air we rate. I, I take an example for that. For example, you have a telescope. You can buy a telescope from for $100 and you can see the moon, uh, low resolution, but you can see the moon and other stars. But if you buy a telescope for one hundred thousand dollars. You uh, you can see the uh, the more stars, more details, but the low price telescope uh, have the same job. If you if you talk about uh, the API, uh, one moment the EPA uh, sensors. Uh, uh, in, in Canario, we we make an experiment that is put on a Canario and a sensor used for paper for academic that is the dust track 8533. The the data is uh, very good and and the and the and the conclusion is that the the that the sensor that we have Canario. Ha, uh, could be um, model, modeling by the other sensor. But uh, if, if, the, if the person answered the, the, uh, that if this, this sensor have uh, the, the APA or, or the, the, the other standards, no, they don't have. The, these sensors are for uh, more that show tendencies are not for exact uh, for exactly this, the value of the uh, of particulate matter. Got it. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, also, I I share the, the 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 conclusion of the this experiment that Daniel mentioned. Um, the special uh, the, the specialist in in data. Uh, uh, compare the, the two kinds of sensors, a uh, uh, high sensor uh, versus uh, our sensor with a funny way, and and the, uh, the approximation and the the results is uh, is very good for for us because it's is very near to the uh, the expensive sensor. Yeah, and in Jupiter uh, you you can't uh, uh, see the, the the data and the results of the uh, and the details of the this. Uh, this explanation. Yeah. Got it. And we'll include this link, everyone, in the follow-up notes um, when we email it to everyone who registered. 
Um, so you all be able to review that um, later on. Yeah. Uh, another question we just received is, do you have an example of how these tools had an impact in people's life? Yeah, it's, it's a, in, in the beginning I explained some cases of, of successful experience with Canario. Mm, the, the, I, I think that the most valuable experience is the, um, is the landfill in Bogota because the people uh, of, the, of, of this neighborhood uh, is very affected by the landfill, but they don't know that there are other sources of contamination. Um, and with this information, they took many, um, many procedures to, to close that, 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 um, that other source of, of contamination. And uh, there are many other experience, but for example, in, in other, in other places of Colombia. Um, but I think that the most important thing is that you have air quality information in any place, in your home, in your bike, in your car, that you, that you don't have. Um, and it's very easy to, to understand. There is no big, big uh, technical requirements for understanding the information that is shown in a screen with a with emoticon that is happy, that is ugly, you, it's very easy. And, and I think that is the most, um, the most, the most successful experience. Yeah, maybe another, another experience that uh, we have is that um, uh, we we have a some uh, response from the politicians in, in Colombia. The some uh, some moments moments of, from activists like uh, like a Daniel and another people the, that fight uh, for the rights they may be changing in the future. Uh, maybe these uh, actions uh, produce uh, some uh, change in the in the political. Uh, uh, decisions or from the government, uh, maybe in, in the in the mayor of the cities, um, maybe this is another good uh, uh, conclusion of, of this uh, kind of experiments uh, with uh, a citizen science uh, information for the people. No. Yeah. Great. So related to that, someone said. Have you been able to share these results with environmental authorities? And if so, what did they say about it? So have you shared this with any environmental government authorities or just people who are um, in leadership positions in this area? Um, Caroline, uh, just uh, before this uh, webinar, uh, we are talking with the authority, ambiental authority in our city, Bogota. Uh, we have uh, the idea of uh, start to meet, to have um, measure air quality in the in the uh, bicycle roads in the city because uh, with the COVID nineteen we have to go to the work at the bicycle and we need to know what the the kind of of air we are breathing. And we're talking about with the authority, uh, we uh, start to a project to uh, have data of air quality inside the city and the uh, user of bicycles. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. This, this is an example of, of how the citizens can compare the data and their ideas with the government. For example, uh, like Juan, Juan, Juan Carlos say, if you, in, in, this COVID, uh, in this COVID season, we have to, to increase the use of bicycles. But uh, I think non-government on the world is prepared. The citizens can make this, this type of sensor, local sensor, and they give 
uh, the information to the other people like we 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 make in Canario and you don't have to you don't have to take uh, you don't have to build a very low, very high quality sensor no uh, with with citizen with citizen science you make a low cost sensor and the information uh, is for you or for your friends or you publish in Twitter, but you don't have to have the um, the, um, the the scientific study to publish that maybe have take two years or one year. This is an information that is quickly that is uh, online on on the on the social networks and it's very easy to to achieve. That's great. Um, so we have one more question and um, everyone feel free to add any additional questions you have as we answer this next one. But this is a question that actually came in before the webinar via email. So someone asked, um, if a sensor has outdoor air flowing through it, how do you prevent spiders and insects from entering it, which would likely severely affect the readings? Um, so they want to know, how do you um, deal with spiders and insects with the sensors? <laughs> I don't know. In my, in my case, I have a sensor, I think, three months on the outside, and there is no spider. But uh, the inlet and outlet of the air is very small. And at, at this time, we don't have this problem, but, but it's interesting. I don't think, I don't think in this situation. <laughs> in Bogota, we don't have too many insects in the ambient, uh, but this is a good question for a person yeah. that lives in, uh, in, in, in more warm cities. Uh, and we have this question, uh, for the next design, what about with insects <laughs> don't affect the, 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 the canario measures? I'll let you all know. I'll, I'll make my own. I'm in Florida and we have lots of insects. There's no shortage. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, looks like another question came in. Someone asked, um, they put a link in the, the question box. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy it and put it in the chat box as well so you all can see it too. But they said this write-up, it's on the thingiverse.com, shows Panasonic and Bosch sensors. Can you help me understand why both are being used? Yeah, the, 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 the more important thing is because uh, uh, we, we need uh, the, the, the measure of the humidity variable because uh, uh, after uh, 95 uh, percent uh, in the, the measures for the pollution uh, the, for the PM sensor is it may, be, may be bad. The idea is uh, the measure, the, the more important measure is the, the, the humidity. But uh, with a Bosch sensor, uh, we have uh, another say, air quality indicator for indoors. Uh, but right now, the, we we looking for for we researching about the this sensor, uh, these kinds of uh, box sensors because the, the box is is uh, is a different uh, measure the, than the the particular particular uh, sensor with a la uh, laser. Uh, they're using another technology different to the laser uh, with a diffraction, diffraction the, the Panasonic sensors uh, um, take the, the, the measures uh, for, for show uh, us, but the, the Bosch sensor is, is very different. The, um, the idea is, is, is working in that, maybe uh, research uh, the difference in, 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 in these uh, kind of sensors for maybe have uh, uh, options for the people. Uh, but right now, um, the, the, the more important conclusion is like uh, we, we are researching that, yeah. Yeah. Great. 
Any last minute questions from the audience? And while we wait on those, for our panelists, do you have any closing messages for us that you want people to remember? Who is start? <laughs> uh, I, I start with, with the next message. We have sensor, for example, in Houston, Texas. We have another sensor in Mexico, in, in, in Mexico and Berlin and other, and other cities. Um, it's an invitation for any people that make the sensor. It's very easy. And the information that gives the sensor is for you. It's an, it's an important, important matter because the air quality affects direct, affect direct our, our health. And in the season of COVID, uh, the air quality is a very important issue because uh, it is in a study, but the conclusion is that a city with a bad quality, air quality have more COVID cases. And if you if you breathe uh, bad, bad air quality, you have many uh, disadvantages for the for the for the respiratory uh, diseases like the COVID. Um, I I have two sensors, uh, one outside of my house, one inside of my house, and. I have information of what type of air I breathe. Uh, if you boil a canary or if you boil at anything, do you serve a air quality sensor? You can see what kind of air you breathe. Uh, you can see the water quality. You can smell it. You can see it. But the air quality, you you don't you have no information. What about the air quality? A canario can help you to see what air quality you breathe. Thank you. Any other thoughts from folks before we all go? And if, um, if not, I'm going to quickly, as you all kind of exit for the day, don't forget to make a sensor. I just wanted to show you our SciStarter tools database. Um, if you have um, citizen science tools that you think people could benefit from, feel free to add them to the database. And you can see our latest edition was um, our friends at Conario added the low cost, low cost air quality sensor. So, um, you know, if you're, we're all, we're going to send out a bunch of links to you all, including the recording of this webinar afterward. But, you know, if you're thinking, I don't know where to find this, you can always go to SciStarter and search on tools. And you can find um, the tool page here for the low quality air um, quality sensor. I mean, the high quality, low cost air quality sensor, lots of words there. But thank you so much, everyone, for doing this. We really appreciate it. And thank you especially to our panel for educating us. Um, we have another version of this webinar in Spanish at one o'clock Eastern, so in about 40 minutes. Um, so for my panelists, I'll see you over there. I think you all have the link for the Spanish language webinar. So um, yeah, thank you everybody and thank you to our attendees. We're looking forward to um, getting you involved in air quality monitoring. Bye thank everybody. You. Thank you, Caroline. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.